Podcast, Volume 6. Not episode, volume. We're proper here. It's not a volume. It's a volume, because it's so massive in this thing going against that we Delsum. do. You're going against Delson. Oh, he looks creepy. Yeah, he does. So, special podcast, where Nelson's actually playing the game instead of me. Um, before we uh, get to anything else, you'll notice the walls are very blank behind us, because we're in phase two of the move. We will be moving very, very soon. And, uh, oh, yeah, that's a lot. Of Look at that. Yeah. yeah, there was something fucked up when you were playing it earlier. Don't get that yet. Fight. That is a health. Nelson doesn't play Mega Man often, so I'm gonna have to coach him. Ah! Are you already at a mini boss? What's happening? The arrow said go that way. What? See, there's an arrow right there. Oh, I didn't see that before. Uh, run past that dude. He's apparently hard. Yep. Oh! 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 What? Yeah, charge shot. Ow! Oh no! Just, oh, you should just climb fast. Just go. I'm out of here. Um. I made a mistake in taking on Dalson. Yeah, you did. Oh man, I can't jump through that either. No, you can't. So, um, yeah, I thought this was going to be a pretty slow week for our stuff for the podcast. Oh, shh. You were fucked in this level. Yep. Let him fire. There you go. Go get all that health. <laughs> uh, but no, they decided to drop a bunch of, uh, big bowl of trailer bomb on us. Uh, first that was, I think it was on Wednesday, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 dropped. And, um, surprisingly, that was a lot more fun than I expected. Oh, Actually, yeah. it dropped Tuesday night, and uh, most people didn't see it until Wednesday morning. Like it was a lot of fun. It seemed like the producers and director and everybody involved with that film listened to the fans of what fans wanted. Um, just because it looked like they took all of our complaints seriously. Oh, you can't hit him while he's spinning. That sucks. And just jump! Oh, uh, and it seems like the turtles slimmed down a bit. These guys suck. Ah! Not like you said, I gotta go, but then you just fucking stop. And you yeah, he wouldn't. He wouldn't start moving. Oh jeez. Shoot him when he stops spinning. There you go. Um, and yeah, it seemed like they listened to all the fans, and they got rid of. <gasps> <laughs> oh, what a jerk. They got rid of a lot of the stuff we hated, like Shredder's an actual person now. It looks like they brought his daughter into the film. Mm. Uh, Bebop and Rocksteady there. They look awesome. By Rocksteady way. being played by WWE champion Sheamus. Yep. And also, another WWE competitor is in there in Stephen Amell. A lot of you know him as the Green Arrow. I'm, I know him as um, Neville's tag team partner against Stardust in, at SummerSlam because I don't watch Arrow. I'm sorry. I just don't trust the CW for anything. Oh, oh you missed. And, um, so this, I think this is the first you... movie outside of a WWE Studios movie uh, that has two uh, people who have competed in a WWE ring together. Oh! You are okay. just bad at Mega Man. Just climb, just climb as fast as you can. Josh, what do you want me to do? I'm climbing as fast as I can. Stop leaving the screen! I'm not trying to. Like, the freaking... Oh, god damn it. You're gonna die right here. Yep. He's too high. Um, I can't even focus on what I'm trying to talk about. Um, yeah, no, we got Stephen Amell. In it as Casey Jones, which is pretty exciting. Shams is uh, rock steady. You got beef up and rock steady in there. And I love the money shot at the end of that trailer. The giant tank coming out with rock steady piloting it <laughs> out of the water, just shooting that bullet at the screen. Uh, the tank shell at the turtles. Good shot. He's gonna disappear. Don't shoot him yet. There you go. Move to the side and shoot him. Oh, I was gonna kill him. Ah! Just jump and shoot. You don't always have to have a charge shot. Nope, that is not in the Mega Man playbook. Oh, you bastard. But, no, 
that movie's looking a lot of fun. And then also, we're getting, uh, we got today, the X-Men Apocalypse trailer, which, holy shit, made me forget all about Captain America for a split second. Jump! No, don't shoot ah! him! You can't shoot him when the blade's spinning! Yes, yeah, over. Yeah, I'm trying to. It's not really responding to me. Oh, jeez. Because he knows you're not a real fan. Shut I think up. that's my next tattoo. I think I'm going to get 8-Bit Mega Man on my arm. Oh, yeah, I forgot about you. Yeah, charge shot here, then hop up there after he fires his little fire sword. But, no. Oh, oh no! He's, he's going to be back, too! Yeah, I know. But it looked like the producers and everybody involved with that film was listening to the fans as well. Because we got um, a blue apocalypse instead of Ivan Ooze. Who uh, also looks like he had the little lip outline that Apocalypse has in the comic books. That was not present in any other pictures we saw of Apocalypse in AEW or any behind the scenes or in the previous uh, leaked footage of it. So that's exciting that they're listening to the fans and Apocalypse looked badass. Yeah. Like, I am super excited for this movie, and um, speaking of what I'm excited for in 2016, so for me, I'm excited for uh, Civil War and, um, damn it, dude, uh, Civil War and X-Men Apocalypse, out of, you know, the big comic book movies coming out with uh, the Turtles, Batman v Superman, and Deadpool in there too, so what are you excited for? I'm excited for Deadpool and Captain America. Not X Men with your favorite X Men being in this featured in this film Jubilee, Jubilation. No, no, not at all. I mean, I, I, I am, but not as much as I was for. Oh! Yeah, he's always going to appear above you, so he's gonna let him go, and then there you go. See? Oh shit! I don't like this level. I wish I could get out of it. <laughs> oh, I can. Yeah. I will just wait to die before I get to another level there because I don't like that level. Oh, this is going to be a lot of fail on this podcast, I feel. Uh, yes. So if you were to rank the summer movies that are coming out, so for me, I'm going to say right now, I'm going to say X-Men, Cap, Deadpool, Turtles, Batman v Superman. How would you rank those? Captain America, Deadpool, X-Men, Turtles... Batman v Superman. So we're both in agreement that Batman v Superman is our least anticipated film. Oh my gosh, man. You know, if you're into it, that's cool. I'm not. I, I don't know. I I'm mean, I'm not even going to. The trailer it. made me lose anticipation because, I mean, what was great about the Cap and the X Men trailers, mm -hmm. we got enough in there to to, to, to wet our whistle, to give us a little taste, a little, a little appetite. Yes. A little appetizer there. And, um,. I feel I got the whole course, like, I just got it all shoved in my mouth with uh, Batman v Superman. Like, I feel like I've seen that entire movie now in a three minute snippet. Yeah. Where I have the general idea of what's, <gasps> where I have a general idea of what's going on in X-Men and in Cap. Yeah. But I don't know everything that's going on. Like, Captain America didn't even show us the villains. We saw zero villains in that Cap trailer. Oh yeah. So, I mean, we, I mean, General Thunderbolt Ross might be a villain. I mean, he's villainous. I like, I like how people are like, well, are we going to get the Red Hulk? I was like, I sincerely doubt that. Yeah, I doubt that. I mean. Oh, jeez. I think I made a mistake. Again. <laughs> no, you just got to dodge. You got to work on your platforming skills. Yeah. I was like, just jump off screen. <gasps> oh, I thought I was going to land on that. Remember, duck, dodge, dive. I can't duck! Dodge. There's no crouching in Mega Man. What the fuck? Was that Hello Kitty? I don't know. Oh, geez. There's health that way. Get up that ladder on the second tier. On the second tier? You can't pause in Mega Man! Yeah, the second tier. See, there's health right It's there. not letting me get over. I, oh, you uh, can't. Uh, jump. It's not letting me jump either. Oh. Uh. Like, I can't. Uh. I have to get up here. Oh, jeez.
Mega Man takes skill. But yeah, it's like the I feel like I got the whole movie with Batman vs Superman. Where I don't feel I got that with the other two trailers. Like, oh, yeah. I think the only bit of the third act we I don't think we saw any of the third act in the Cap trailer. Uh, the only bit of the third act that I think we got in um, the X Men was a bald Charles Xavier at the very end of that trailer. Which I thought that was actually pretty cool. I thought that was kind of weird. The reveal though, we lost the signal again. again. Jeez. Oh, this so is just not going to work, dude. All right. Well, that's the end of that for for me playing because my PC I was running it on is just not powerful enough. Well, we had a technical difficulty up the ass. Yep. You know what? I think I'm going to play some Star Wars. There you go. Ah. It's a game I don't have to pay attention to. <laughs> so I can talk more. Yeah, there you go. Also, keep the podcast going while I'm up. What were we talking about before we were so rudely interrupted? Fuck. Um, we're talking about movies. I was making fun of you for being a fan of Jubilee because that's gay. Um, all right, Mister. I'm a fan of any superhero that's blonde. It's not true. I'm a fan of Deadpool and Thor. Yeah, but you also root for anyone that's blonde. That's not true. What you said it, it yourself. You're Mister Iron Fist. Who the fuck is Iron Fist? Because someone's got to like Iron Fist and fucking Luke Cage because no one else does. Heroes for Hire. I'm the only one man enough to like those two. Um, oh, Let me get my list back up. I was looking at Instagram while we were waiting. I was bored. Mm. Stupid technical difficulties. Mm. Alright. So, oh, big news if you haven't heard, Rocket League is coming to Xbox One, which I'm excited for because I don't have a PS4 and I don't think my PC is powerful enough to sustain running that game because I just use my PC for work and writing and not really for anything super graphical. But it's a decent laptop. I don't know if it would run Rocket League, but this saves me time. I mean, you paid more than I paid for mine, so I would think that it would be a little bit more powerful. Probably would, but I don't feel like doing all that I shit. mean, if it has a, if it actually has a regular Intel processor, not an Atom like mine. Oh, yeah, it's got, it's got like a Core 7. Oh, you, you should be fine. If nah. it's got a Core 7. It's just whether or not you have enough disk space is, a, is the whole thing. I don't know what you got, because I haven't looked at your laptop. Nah, I don't know. But yeah, if you got a Core i7, you should be fine. No, right, maybe I don't. I don't do PC gaming that often. But yeah, I'm excited go. for Rocket League because there's going to be a lot of Rocket League videos this summer when that game comes out. He's got to wait till July. I'm so excited though. I don't care. I'll wait till July. Yeah. Yeah. Wait this long for this fucking game to come to Xbox One. Well, I can wait <laughs> seven more months, eight more months. Ooh, Brazilian nut. Oh, there you go. By the way, this podcast brought to you by Nature Box. Not really. No, it's not. I just want to feel professional for a second. Way to fuck that up early on. I was going to save that at the end of the promotion. Mm. Son of a bitch. Wow. But it's good if you enter in the code Clash of the Nerds. You're not going to get anything off. But if you do, that'd be kind of funny. <laughs> mm-hmm. But No, Rocket League, I'm excited for. So we're playing Star Wars. And something that was announced... Um, Today, or not today, I'm sorry, announced this week, was that uh, Lucasfilms is looking, uh, they want to hire a female director to uh, direct a Star Wars film. And I have no problem with a female director. Damn, we're getting our ass kicked. I love dropping into a game when we're losing. I have no problem with a female director directing a Star Wars film at all. My problem is announcing that. Because I feel when you announce it, you're just looking for pats on the back, that you're not necessarily hiring a female director because you think she's the best for the job. You're hiring her because you want people to say, oh, look at them. They're progressive. They're hiring a female director. I I would have just sooner sat back, them hire a female director, and then everyone be like, oh, good for them. They're taking the forefront because we haven't had really a major female director in a science fiction film. But they didn't do that. They decided we're going to do the whole let's get congratulatory comments. Yeah. Fuck is everybody. And, um... Oh, son of a bitch. Oh, what a jerk. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I just think, and that's the problem I have with, like, this whole, like, 
diversifying of film these days and everything's because it seems like they're overcompensating they're they're announcing these things oh we're going to be doing this and again all for uh, diversity but the problem is like when you announce it like that it doesn't seem like you're doing it uh, to actually be diverse you're just doing it um, to pander yeah to pander and get kudos for it like oh good for them they're diversifying it drives me freaking insane yeah it's it's ridiculous like I was I was actually kind of thinking about it when they were talking about Marvel they want a black director for um, Black Panther and I was like that makes sense it's a movie you know it's a black superhero get a black director but then I was thinking about it I was like Black Rider makes sense because you know you can capture the whole concept because you know you're writing it but a director is just the guy who brings it to film He's not the guy who's um, creating the story. Creating the story, so I mean, you, I don't know. It's just kind of weird because I just again, I think they're just kind of pan, not pandering. Pandering is the wrong word. You can use that word, but I'm not gonna use it. It's just it seems like when they say things like that, it's uh, it comes off false to me. Yeah, I, I get that. I mean, I feel I also feel the same way. I mean. You, and How am I going to spawn right there? You know, and some people that watch this channel might know that I am also an actor. And I don't get to... I don't see a lot of roles that are just, like, asking for Asians. I'm lucky if I get an open ethnicity call. And it it's, a, it's annoying to me. And then you see all these, like, movies where they're trying to shoehorn ethnicities in. And that drives me insane, too. It's like... Make a character that is that ethnicity. Make them a good character. Like, in, in the comic books, they just changed the Hulk into an Asian dude. I don't like that at all. Just make me... Just make a freaking Asian character that's not the Hulk. And then build him up in the story. I don't even particularly care for the Hulk. So I don't like the fact that they made him Asian. I yeah. just don't. Because with the with the exception of Iron Man, your core Avengers have all been changed. Mm -hmm. Jane Foster's now Thor. Sam Wilson's now Falcon. Mm -hmm. um, I think I gotta kill Jesus. Uh, Sam Wilson's now the Falcon. The Spider-Man um, that's in the Avengers is Miles Morales. Well, but you still have Peter Parker as Spider-Man. Yeah, right that, that that at least there's that. And my thing is like. I like Falcon and I like Sam Wilson. I would prefer them to see, take the Falcon and make him a bigger character. Yeah, elevate him to another level. Yeah, because the thing about the thing about Captain America is Batman is a mantle. Batman can be anybody. Anybody can take on that mantle. It's a symbol. The thing about Cap is Cap is. How much? Didn't do that. Didn't do that either. I don't know how to change the third person. I play better than the third person. Hmm. Cap is Steve Rogers. Like, everything about Captain America is Steve Rogers. Yeah. So that's where I don't like other people taking on the mantle of Captain America. Because I don't feel that's that rings true to the character. Wasn't Steve Rogers a uh, U.S. agent for a little bit, too? He was when Bucky was. After he died and then he came back because no one stays dead forever. No, um, he, was, he was super soldier, Steve Rogers, when Bucky took over. U.S. agent, remember the the gray? Uh, oh, oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, from back in like like the '90s, he was just like a grittier Captain America. I guess he was that for briefly when he wasn't Cap, because I don't remember because '90s. Yeah, '90s is kind of a blur. I don't like. To... Jeez, <sighs> fucking kidding me, man. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get to that. Yeah, I, he was for a brief time, but then he wasn't anymore. Because I think the guy who took his place is Cap. In the like seventies, when Cap or there was, there was a weird story where like when after Cap was frozen, there was another person who took up the mantle of Captain America, and when he was he became U.S. agent after I Captain think, America. I don't remember. If All I know is he was bitter, and he was on the West Coast Avengers. Check out Nerd Sync, um, the YouTube channel. They actually have something that talks about oh U.S. agent, uh, uh, or US, Captain America, U.S. Or? agent, and the replacement Captain America. Oh okay, yeah. I'll so. Yeah, it's something like, and I uh, encourage our audiences to check it out because Nerd Sync's actually a really good uh, YouTube channel, especially for a lot of comic stuff. I yeah. go there weekly to watch videos. I also like comic story, but I go back for another. Like, 
for like the uh, like older stories or the more in depth thing, like a more in depth storyline thing, Majid. Yeah. I like playing vehicles so much better. <laughs> and this is like one of those capture things. I hate these capture games. I just wanted to try the I honestly we just keep getting distracted by the surroundings. I see the Star Destroyers up in the sky. Yeah. I see that freaking gigantic crash over there. I wonder if that's the Star Destroyer that the Millennium Falcon flies through in the trailer. Because mm. this is Jakku. It sure as heck isn't the Star Destroyer that Starkiller brought down because that was a Star Wars legend now. You know what? This is going to piss you off. And I actually, I think I wrote... Oh, I'm out of the combat zone. Um, you know what the best part about all of the, um... Watch out for the grenades. Yep, I saw. Best part about, uh, both, um, Star Wars The Force Unleashed games are... That, that first level where you play as Vader. Why couldn't the game be that? Hmm. Yeah. I mean, that was, that was, that was a badass, uh, level. Uh, I, I don't get wrong. Shield. Oh! Man, it doesn't really piss me off. I mean, I mean, I like the games for what they were, though... Force Unleashed 2 was way too short. I haven't played this game in a while, and everyone's got better fucking hands than I do. <laughs> oh, you gotta get that ring rust off. I know. No, it's not even ring the, rust. I'm it's like that time. fucking pulse cannon. I don't even have access to it now because I haven't played this game for fucking oh. ever. So all these people are like higher levels than me. Oh, I got you. That's Fallout's fault. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, jeez. Tonight is the night of technical difficulties. No, tonight is the night of fucking the Xbox One is a piece of shit with the Kinect. Because I didn't even say the magic... I didn't even fucking say Skype or Xbox. How the fuck are you going to switch to Skype when I say Fallout? I was going to laugh if you didn't get I'd have thrown my fucking controller through the goddamn TV. <laughs> At least you got back into the game. Uh, but, yeah, Force and Waste, that would be much better for the Dark Vader game. I wish it was still canon. Canon's a weird thing. Like, who gives a shit if something's canon or not? I mean, canon to me. <laughs> you've read the story. Yeah, exactly. It's like, you know what? I'll consider it canon. I don't care if anybody else does. Yeah, it's like, you've read the stories. Watch the movies. Watch, watch the, the movies, you know, play the games. Who cares if somebody at Lucas uh, Films says, nope, this is not canon anymore. Yeah. I mean, I understand why they did it, too. Because, you know, they had a lot of uh, stuff that was going to be going on technically at the same time as the new movie and contradictory to the new movie. So. Yeah. yeah well. So, I mean, people who I, I feel people who worry about canon, like, what's canon, what's not canon... Like, and I totally get why Lucasfilm said, nope, none of this is canon anymore, because then it hamstrings them. Yeah. Like, then they've got to try to make movies either about what's already come, uh, what's already been read in books and comics, or they got to try to, um, you know, go around it. And that just hamstrings them, like, creatively. Yeah. So, I have no problem with them doing that. Yeah. Why won't my gun fire? So, yeah, who cares? No, I did. Did you did you read about the uh, the comments George Lucas made about the Force uh, Force Awakens? He's like, nah. that's a this movie is going in a completely different direction, the complete opposite direction that uh, I meant for the story to go. I'm like, well, you shouldn't have sold it then, and you should have made the freaking movies. No, he shouldn't have. I'm glad that's he also it. very true. Uh, like, if you really wanted to go that way, then you shouldn't have sold it, and you should have made the movies yourself. But no, you didn't want to make the movies anymore, and you sold it. So, boo-hoo. You, you don't get the call the shots anymore. And obviously, we don't particularly care that he doesn't get to make his movies because... No, I don't, because the prequels suck. Yeah. The prequels are just terrible. I can't watch them. <laughs> like, they're just bad. Like, I was watching uh, Cinema Sins, Everything Wrong with Phantom Menace. Mm. It is just fucking terrible. <laughs> Like, there, there's very little redeeming qualities 
the only thing I would watch in that movie would be the Darth Maul fight. That's about it. Yeah. Like if you want, if you want, if you want a better version of Episode One, go to Belated Media's uh, YouTube channel. He's got uh, What If Episode One and Two Were Good, where he kind of breaks down like the good parts of the movie and adds to them. Mm. And coming on Tuesday is, <coughs> excuse me. Coming on Tuesday is uh, Episode Three, just in time for uh, Episode Seven coming out next week and his version of episode uh, one and two are way better than what we just did yeah I'll have to check those out though I you know what I want to see and I don't know how I'm going to ever get a chance to see it I want to see the Topher Grace edit of one two and three into one movie that'd be kind of cool yeah because I heard about it I have no idea how to get it I've heard nothing but good things about it I mean, oh, you're going really? to have to try to find bit torrents about it or maybe just maybe Lucas Fells were like yeah those movies suck Let's see what Topher did. Yeah, I might have to find like, like a fan edit set because I, I found one of those before. I got I got. Because you know, one. I really wouldn't mind if uh, they remade the prequels and did them totally different. Because <laughs> let's face it, I mean, with the prequels, none of what is in that uh, movie that movie is what we pictured when we heard Obi Wan talking to Luke. Yeah. God damn it, man. Seeing that gun, that's the DL-44 Hans gun, is the last gun you can earn. Mm. Like, you have to get up to, like, like level 40-something. Yeah, yeah, you're almost there. You're ranked 17. How was I not last place on our team? Because two guys below you. How was I not last place in general? There are other people on the other team who sucked. Mm. One guy got zero points. I'm just, I'm just going to assume that guy dropped in. I don't yeah, he probably just dropped in. Yeah, I don't want to assume the worst of him. I don't, I don't, I don't want to say that he's like me in this game because I was terrible. The, the last time, the one time that you had me play it. You need to buy this. I have someone else to play with. Mm. So yeah, we were way off to topic there. We were talking about shoehorning devil collection. I don't want to play Battle of I'm not a fan of this map. What's next? Yeah, I'm sure I want to quit. I want to quit, quit. Um, Unless you want to go back to that adversity. No, I want to go back to talking about the prequels and why they suck. And I think... Because uh, they want to do a Star Wars movie every year. And I'm not a fan of that. I think we're going to get too inundated with Star Wars. I mean, I don't mind... Because, I don't know. To me, Star Wars is all about... Han, Luke, and Leia, their journey. And I know with the new trilogy, we're going to get away from them. But, like, these side stories they're going to do in a young Han Solo movie, I uh, I don't even want that. Mm. I think that's dumb. Um, I don't know, it's just... I think we're going to get too much Star Wars, and too much is not a good thing, because too much Star Wars means... We're, we're going to get burned out. Per- burned out, and we're going to have a really good chance of getting shitty Star Wars movies. And we had three shitty Star Wars movies, and I don't want any more shitty Star Wars movies. I would rather them just be episodic like they have been. We're going to get 7, 8, 9 in the next, I guess, like, 6 to 10 years. Yeah. Um, Have that be that. I mean, that's all I care about. Yeah, I don't particularly care about, like, side stuff. I mean... I, I heard that the, the, the Clone Wars TV show wasn't too bad. Well, I mean, but that's still focused on the main thing. Yeah. Um, I don't have a problem with that. But, like, these other things they want to do, let's save that for a uh, TV show. Yeah. Like, I heard the TV show is one of And I've seen, like, a couple uh, episodes. Like, I saw, like, when Darth Maul came back in Clone Wars. That was, that was actually pretty cool. I always love the sound of Tide Fighter, man. I know. The one thing I hate about this particular level is when you respawn, you start so far away from everything. Mm-hmm. Isn't this where you die trying to get saved? Because you couldn't pull up the tide. Probably. Mm-hmm. 
I've died many a time trying to get Slave on up on the top. They want to make more Star Wars movies other than episodes 7, 8, 9. We make the prequels. Get rid of those. <laughs> That's what I want. Or release the Turf for Grace or something. Yeah. No, did, did you find it odd that Topher Grace was the one? What the fuck is that? That's just like one behind me. Uh, huh. Yeah, didn't you? I, I found it very odd that it, of all No, because I believe Topher Grace. Topher Grace wants to be like a director or some shit also. Oh, really? Yes, I mean. Okay. He probably just wanted to he probably, he probably practice. Just to practice. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, let's face it. I mean, if he's anything like his That 70s Show character, he's a big stupid geek like yeah. us. So he probably loves Star Wars just as much, and he's like, this movie sucked. I can do better. Yeah. And there's actually, I saw, um, and we'll post it on the Facebook page and the website. I'll do, I'll write something up about it. Um, there is a project going on where someone was taking, like, the original Star Wars release and uh, combining that with the Blu-ray release to create a... Um, Blu-ray, like, HD version of the original theatrical cut without all the shit added in. Hmm. I don't... I mean, that's an interesting, uh... prospect there, but I don't... I don't know how that really would work, per se, it, with certain scenes that have been altered. Oh, no, they have the, they have the original, like, movie from the Laserdisc. And they're up converting that because the original laser disc had all that shit like that didn't have the additions from the nineties. Okay. No, there's uh. I'll, 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 well, what? what uh, I, I guess I'm just having a hard time like discerning like how are you gonna up convert it without looking without it looking like shit. Oh uh, well, they've got a process. I mean, the yeah, usually the process revol revolves around like the original like negatives. Oh, I'm sure they're working on something. Probably. I mean, I, I, I also... And you know what? For a couple, like, un, ungood scenes, mm -hmm. I will take uh, an unaltered trilogy, because that's what I want. Yeah. Because, I mean, the only thing that, I mean, I, the, other, the other thing I don't know is what the resolution was on, on the, um, the Laserdisc copies. I'm sure that they, they were good enough. Um, I'm sure they were way better than VHS, but, you know, as, as someone who does video editing, uh, at least knows a little bit about video editing, as well as, like, I don't... I guess, you know, I wouldn't mind a couple of, like, less than HD scenes for an unaltered copy. Yeah. I mean, what, what what's it going to matter to me if the scene where, like, freaking Han shoots first is in standard deck? Yeah. So, I mean, well, well, I mean, I've been, I was looking at the website today. I didn't really get too far into it. Hmm. But it looks pretty cool. I like the idea of it. Yeah. And, I mean, if Disney's not going to get off their asses and do it, if Fox isn't going to do it. And someone's got to do it. Yeah. So. No. And I don't know. Because I don't know. I just feel like. That should be something for the fans. I mean, give us a choice. Yeah. Because I, I hated that. Uh, the fact that um, Lucas released the, um, the theatrical cut on, uh, on DVD. But he didn't do shit to it. Like he didn't up. No, and it's and it, it, it was, was a straight. It was stripped. No, it was stripped off of the uh, laser disc. Oh, was it stripped off the laser disc? Yeah. And it's got a lot of motion blur, and it looks terrible. Uh, huh. Um. No, but actually, the Han shot first sucks. I mean, not Han shot first, but Greedo shooting first scene sucks. But the worst, the absolute worst in that entire thing. Is um, the little dance scene in Jedi in Jabba's palace? Oh. That is one of the worst things I've ever seen, and that takes me out of the film. Rebel ship down. 
Oh, you're talking about that little green thing with the lipstick that was dancing on? Yeah. Yeah, that was very off-putting. I remember that. Yeah. Very off-putting. So. I'll have nightmares about that. No, it was, just, it was just terrible. And, like, Han walking behind Jabba because Jabba was originally a human in it. That looked bad. There's just so much that looked bad. Like, I understand you wanted to put those scenes back in there, Lucas, but fuck. Didn't do a good job of doing it. No, <laughs> he didn't. So, I mean, we're going to get off. I mean, it's Star Wars week. Actually, before we get off Star Wars, big question. What, what if Episode 7 sucks? I'll be very disappointed. I mean, where do you go from there? I mean, this is this big push by Disney. I mean, we've seen all the commercials. Like, I've bitched about it on Facebook and stuff like that. The Campbell suit, the Coffee Mate, the Verizon wireless commercial, the Fiat commercial, fucking Fiat 500 commercial, light side, dark side. Oh, what about the Dodge commercial? The so, Dodge commercial. Yeah. Like, every fucking, like, thing. Like, this is the worst commercialization of Star Wars ever. I mean, so if this movie sucks, where do you go from there? I mean, it's... Oh, I, I mean... And it doesn't even have to suck. I mean, it, it can be a good movie, and people will shit all over it. Yeah. Am I playing the same map again, just from a different perspective? Uh, I am. Yes. God damn it. So it's, it's just, it's just going to be an interesting thing, like fan reaction. To the movie, yeah, I'm, I, and like like you said before, I'm sure there there's gonna be people, regardless if it's good or not, people are just gonna whine about it. Oh yeah, because someone sent me an article about um, the prequels being better uh, than the original trilogy. I didn't fucking read it. I just sent them a message. I was like, I'm not reading this because it's not true. <laughs> I was like, I'm not even gonna waste my time. Yeah, I, I get that way too. It's like I'll see an article or I'll get sent an article and I was like ah no alright that one got away and I'm trying to think of the article I saw the other day that I tried to read it but then I was like oh no oh yeah it, it was uh why Batman vs. Superman has already beat Captain America Civil War I'm like uh, uh, I saw that it's because of like Number of time like shit got downloaded or viewed. Or yeah, like yeah, that. I saw. I actually saw your comment on it, and then I clicked on it. I got to like the third sentence, and they used the word "despite," and I was like, "No, no," because it's not a word. Yeah, and I was like, "No, what you? I already. Oh, well, one, I don't particularly care for this site anyway. I'm not gonna call them out like that. But I don't particularly care for their writing. Their writing always usually just pisses me off." I mean, uh, and I, I don't like a lot of sites because they do a lot of clickbait and stuff. Yeah, and that was I try to, all I try to, I try to avoid that with our site at all. Like, I don't try to, like, deceive people with how I title articles and things like that because I want people to want to come and view our site because of content, not because, oh, we have this fucking article title that totally, like, lies to you. Yeah. And the site in, that, uh, that had this article, they do that all the time. Yeah, it's like, I... I definitely don't want to click it. I've actually I unfollowed them on Facebook. I was like, no, I'm tired of you. You all you all you guys do is piss me off. And, 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 and I'd rather just not be aggravated by that. I'd rather just go about my day being relatively happy, do my job, <laughs> and then I'll go home. Yeah. Now you get upset over our website. Yeah. And, yeah. I feel. I feel. I mean. I don't know, I'm a big Star Wars fan, you know this, I'm a huge Star Wars fan, and I feel this movie's gotta be really good to satisfy me, like, if if it wasn't Star Wars, if it was just a sci-fi film, it could be just okay, and I'd be like, ah, I enjoyed that movie. Yeah. But Star Wars, oh shit, Star Wars for me has to be really good. And, and yeah, I get that, I get that, because I mean, you're, you're a diehard fan, and I'm a fan of Star Wars, That's I'm just not bullshit. nearly as big a fan as, like, but I enjoyed the movie, uh, the, the original trilogy. I didn't mind episode three. I can't, I can't like really name any human value. Episode, episode three one. wasn't terrible, but I wouldn't say it was good by any stretch. I don't, anymore. I don't say that, but I. I all I, all I can say in that respect is it's better than one and two. That's all I can really say. 
and that's really not safe. But. Well, that's just like saying like getting stabbed in the legs get, is better than getting your nuts cut off. Mm, yes. But yes, I would rather get stabbed in the leg than get my nuts cut off. Do I want either of those to happen? No. Well, it could be very. Am awesome. I going to go out of my way to watch episode three? Probably not. I will never watch the previous game. That is just something that's not going to happen. Like, I might watch episode one if it's on TV and there's a jack shit. Why? Shot. And I don't have access to my Blu rays or TV Episode games. one is painful, though. Like, I said might. I would have to, like, dig something up or just try to find something on Netflix before that even happens. Or I'm just too lazy to get up and get the remote. I don't know. Maybe I'm cleaning, cleaning nope. my room. I, if I couldn't get the remote or if I couldn't move, I'd kill myself. Jeez. That is my disdain. It's a bad movie. Mm, yeah. Oh, bullshit that he hit me. He hit you out of a freaking, uh... Do a barrel roll. Do a barrel roll! But, no. The prequels are just fucking terrible. And episode two is just as bad. Like, those awkward love scenes with Padme and Anakin. Holy fuck. They're just terrible. You know, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to link in the description uh, the belated media stuff and uh, everything wrong with um, stuff when we upload this shit because people need to see good versions of uh, ep the episode. Well, everything wrong with isn't a good version of episode one. It just makes fun of it. It's funny, yeah. <laughs> but no, they're just terrible. So, and another big. Big news coming out of the Video Game Awards last week because we were so everyone was so obsessed with uh, Final Fantasy VII. Obviously, we weren't that impressed with the trailer. Yeah. Um. The, oh, that was one thing I didn't I didn't write down. Are you going to uh, talk about Kojima? No, no, that had nothing to do. With that. That's not the Video Game Awards. This was the Sony Experience that we're talking about. Wow. Oh. Um. No. Um. The episodic nature of Final Fantasy VII. They're not going to release one giant game. They're going to release it in episodes. And they said each episode is going to be a different experience. Um, what? Yeah, I don't know if that means gameplay. I'm not sure what they mean by that. They didn't. Um, they didn't elaborate on it. But I kind of like a lot of people are bitching about that. I kind of dig the episodic feel to it because you know, being adults now, being in our 30s, we don't have time to sit down and play like a JRPG. That's very true. And like delve into it for hours and hours at a time. Of course, my first reaction to you saying that all that all that stuff was like, "Wow, I'm really glad I'm not that big of a Final Fantasy fan because I would have felt like I got jerked around." Yeah, a lot of for people, several years. A lot of people feel that way, and I, you know, I don't blame them. But I kind of dig it because then you can get like a section of the game, you can play it, you know, and another section to come up. Some people feel that it's nickel and diming, and it could be. It all depends on what Square charges for it. Yeah. Like, if Square's just like, all right, $10 an episode, and there's going to be six episodes, I'm cool with that, because it's $60, you know? That's, that's the price of a good game. Yeah, so I'm not going to I'm not gonna be pissed off about the episodes. So, I mean, that's just, that's just um, you know, the price of playing video games these days. Yeah. So, Microtransactions. Yeah, so that's not going to bug me, and plus, god damn it. Did you just collide with somebody? I did. So, like, the whole thing, um, for the episodes, for me, I can take a big chunk of the game and do it, and then, you know, not have to worry about, like, trying to undertake a huge undertaking with, uh, Final Fantasy VII. I can just play it at my leisure and everything. So, I mean, bullshit that he dodged that. Nah, you ain't dodging that one, you son of a bitch. <laughs> um, so I like it. Yeah. I mean... That was bullshit hit detection there. We did not collide. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about it, but I mean, at the same time, I'm not really a Final Fantasy VII fan. Really. I have nothing against the game. I just never really played it. I think Final Fantasy VII could be... Uh, someone asked me about that. Um, I think it's in my top five. Because nine's my favorite. Uh, I just really like Zidane. I thought he was a cool character. Um, I, I liked nine. I, yeah, I think for me it goes yeah, seven makes my top ten. Because it goes nine, six, five, and four. Uh nine, six, five, four, and then seven. 
your top ten of what Final Fantasy games? Yeah. I've only played uh, two and a quarter of them. I played eight, nine, and I played like maybe twenty minutes of ten, and I got to the first boss fight in Final Fantasy VII before my PlayStation like froze on me. I've played the first ten. Hmm. Oh yeah, and there was that Final Fantasy twelve game with uh, Dragon Warrior eight. I was not a fan of that either. You didn't like Dragon Warrior? No, I like Dragon Warrior. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't like the demo. Oh, okay. The demo for Final Fantasy, because that's where I was talking about last week, where they brought in that. That weird uh, action RPG style. Oh yeah, for gameplay. twelve. Yeah. Yeah, but it didn't. It didn't work right. I mean, granted, it, it was probably just because it was a demo, but I felt like it was too hard to. Because you, you were free running around, but you still had the old JRPG menus, which that just makes it really confusing. Yeah, I see that. Like, I don't. I don't. I like the turn-based style. Yeah. Because, I mean, it was probably just a, a war. I don't know, and that's just because I've been playing RPGs since the 90s, and that's how it was. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, I, people don't like change. I don't like to change the way. And, I don't know, that's just because, for me, I play RPGs for the story and everything like that. Mm -hmm. So, I've never mind the turn-based feel of the game. Yeah. They launched a missile at you. Yeah, they lost a missile at you. Cocksuckers. So I, ne I never bothered with it. I mean, it didn't bother me. And I didn't like it when they switched to more in action. Because to me, it felt out of place. Because it felt like this weird hybrid action game that was also an but that was trying to still be an RPG. It just it didn't feel right. Like, it it also lost. And then, I don't know, the, um, the Final Fantasy games have just kind of lost. Like, the more realistic they've gotten, I feel they've lost their style. Yeah. Like, they had a certain art style to it because they had the compensate for, you know, the, sh the graphics of the Nintendo and the Super Nintendo, and even... F Ooh. I kind of meant to do that. Just to hurt <laughs> Ramming speed! Um, Picked the wrong part there, guy. Yeah. So, I don't know, the, it just, I just feel like the, the more realistic the Final Fantasy games have gotten, the, uh, the, the charm they've lost. Like, they're not... They don't have that same charm. Yeah, I guess. Like if Fallout went to a hyper realistic look, I wouldn't like it as much because there's this like fifty style uh, to it that I really enjoy. Yeah. You know what game that, that actually kind of inherited that that Final Fantasy charm, or at least retained it in some way? Though they added it to their own style, Kingdom Hearts. I mean, it's like a hybrid. Well, I mean, it's still square. It's, it's still square, and but it inherited that 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 style. And made it into a hybrid with the Disney stuff, which I, I yeah. I told you there was supposed to be a Kingdom Hearts cartoon produced by Disney, right? Yeah, you did tell me about that. I don't know how that works in my mind. For some reason. I, I mean, I, I guess it could just they could just follow the story itself. It, it was that's just something that's very surprising. Yeah, I don't know how it would have worked out, but they didn't. They didn't, obviously they didn't follow through with it. Mm -hmm. But kind of a cool concepts. Oh yeah. So the last thing we're going to talk about, I'm excited for. Actually, no, two more things to talk about. I'm going to save the thing I'm really excited for to last. But Game of Thrones season six, we've got the teaser trailer we posted on the website. I actually, um, I have not gotten a chance to actually watch that. There's not much to it. Um, it's okay. just the teaser. But uh, I haven't heard hide nor hair from George R. R. Martin about fucking Winds of Winter. Finish the goddamn book. Um, yeah, coming out. <laughs> You remember when I sent you that link to that, that Audible book? I was like, really? Yeah. There, there's like they're doing more, like more of the mythology of the, of the world of Westeros, and all I can think is, what the fuck's the damn book? And I get it as a writer. I'm a writer. I've written two books. Amazon.com. You can pick them up if you want. Mm. Um, I get it. Like you don't want to do the same thing over and over again because it gets tedious. And these are tomes, like. What five books in now, and each book is well over a thousand pages. So oh yeah, I look at those that's, books. Like, that's six thousand pages. Well, more than six thousand because I mean, some of them are really big. So I get it. Like you don't want to write the same thing over and over again. But I think if you undertake something that big, 
You gotta finish it because you, you owe it to your fans to finish it. Finish. Start it. Yeah. And that's what your mother and father taught you. I don't know if we're gonna get wins of winter before season six, and I've said this to many people. If season six comes up before wins of winter, I'm done with the books. I'm just gonna watch the show. <laughs> I mean, might as well. And it's, it, that, I mean, that's just how irritated I am with it, like, because I don't want to wait forever for these fucking books to come out. Especially because once uh, it airs in the show, I'm going to be less likely to want to dip into a thousand plus page book to read it, because I'm kind of going to know everything that happens. I mean, some of the details may be different, but, you know, he did sit down with the producers and the directors of the show and outlined, in case I die, this is where I wanted everything to go. Yeah. So, I was like, jeez, man. I like how someone just grabbed the money and fucked it. Fucking crash, so now no one gets it. <laughs> if so I can't have it, no one can! Yeah. Ah! Where's some health? I'm at two. Oh, crash. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you thought I was gonna crash. I thought you just got clotheslined by that thing. Oh, why didn't you close enough to that? Because you don't have to get right on them. You just get close enough. Oh, you got that one. No, I didn't. It's still two. Really? It's really hard to... S uh, there we go. Okay, you got that. Okay, but I'm still two. What the hell? You don't get repair. How are you going to say vehicle repair but not give me anything? Oh, and fuck you, Boba Fett. Cocksucker. And that's not just because Boba Fett just killed him. He doesn't like Boba Fett. He's an overrated character. He's on screen for like five minutes. And he gets beat in the stupidest fucking way possible. Why people think he's cool, I don't know. Uh, that was actually one thing that made me laugh about the, uh, the special editions of the, of the original trilogy. How <laughs> George Lucas tried to make it definitive that he was dead by animated. And I was like, he ain't alive. That animated freaking Snarl... Uh, not Snarl Sarlacc. Sarlacc. Uh, Come out and grab his ass. Yeah, that was great. That made me laugh a lot. Because as a kid, I thought Boba Fett looked cool. Oh, he does look cool. That's, that's about it. But then, you know, after going back and watching the movies when I got older again, I was like, Boba oh, Fett's lame. He's very lame. And his ship confuses me. Like, it lands one way, but then when it flies around, it's like that. Yeah. I'm like, I don't get it. It's dumb. Killed by a tie intercept because it crashed into me. Son of a bitch. It's a bit better. But, yeah, but we're going we're gonna to wrap this up in a second. We're going to talk about my favorite announcement of this week. Psychonauts 2 getting announced. I'm excited. I've already contributed to the, uh, go, it's not a GoFundMe, it's like this new one, Fig, which is like a new crowdfunding. I thought you were going to say something else. I'm like, that's not something you should say on the podcast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought you were going to say go after your That's not a service. <laughs> yeah, so I'm super excited for, uh, Psychonauts 2. I was one of the few people who actually bought Psychonauts for the Xbox, uh, judging by the sales. I'm sure I'd be excited for it if had I played the game. I don't remember anything about it. Oh, it's fun. In fact, I'm, I am I saw it's on the Xbox Live Store. Oh, is it? I'm very tempted to download it again because I haven't played that game in like, what, 15 years? I'm not sure like the Xbox 360 to come out. It's been a long time oh, since man. I played that game. Oh, um, man. At least at the, at the latest, I want to say 2004 or Yeah, it's not like Psychonauts was like at the end. Because, I mean, I, I remember we, like, I got an Xbox, or went half season on an Xbox with, uh, with Tyler uh, when we were still roommates. And that was, like, right around when I went to um, my transfer to Marymount. Yeah. That was, like, around right 2005. So, I am guessing 2004 was when it came out. If I remember. Yeah, so, I mean, it's been a long time since I've played Psychonauts. So, I'm tempted to buy it again just to get psyched up. But as of this recording... They were asking for $3.3 million, and that's not the total cost of the game. That's just for them to go to invest more investors and say, hey, we got this much money from the fans. There's interest. Um, give us more money, because making video games is expensive, people. Yeah, but they've got they've got to 74% of their goal of $3.3 million, so that $2.4 right now. 
So, I mean, it looks like they're going to make it to that end, which, again, doesn't guarantee it's going to get made, because they still got to get more funding. These video games, like I said, are expensive, but yeah. I'm excited. So if you haven't um, contributed yet, go contribute if you're a fan of 3D action uh, platformers, because that's what this game is, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, for those who don't know, like Psychonauts, like the whole premise of the game is this character, and you hop into people's heads and help fight their demons. It's a really cool concept. You do a lot of platforming, you do a lot of action stuff. So, go fund it. <laughs> <laughs> Just go ahead, give them all your monies. Now, you can, I think you can, like, fund as low as, like, five bucks, and, like, every little bit helps to get, you know, a cool game back to market. I mean, that's what we kind of need. Like, everybody bitches about, like, nothing but, like, Call of Duty every year, Madden every year, all these franchises, Assassin's Creed every year. I mean, yes, Psychonauts is a sequel, but it's coming from a studio, uh, Double Fine, that does original things. Like, they did Brutal Legend, which was a fun game that no one bought. I ended up getting it, like, Five bucks at Best Buy on clearance. Oh, yeah, I remember you getting that. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, they do original games, and Psychonauts, again, it's a sequel, but it's a sequel to a game that came out, like, 15 years ago. Or yeah. Or 10 years ago, something like that. So, I think 2005, maybe, it came out? I don't remember. Anyways, go fund it. You want original games, do original games. Like, people bitch about original, like, nothing original. Nintendo comes out with the Wii U. No one buys it. Mario Maker might be my game of the year stay tuned for that article coming next week on clash of the nerds dot com because that's a fun fucking game it really is um but we're gonna end it there i have no idea how close we are because there's gonna be so many edits to this because just shit not working right yeah. so this might be one of our shorter podcasts but thank you again for joining us uh click that like and subscribe down below because the more subscribers we get the more likes we get the more views we get the more we can do these videos for you we like doing these videos yeah so we'll do them with nobody watching and no one watched the last one because it was like 20 views. You everybody. <laughs> but um, so yeah, like and subscribe. Uh, go check out the site clashofthenerds.com. That gets more views than the uh, YouTube channel. Which I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, it's a start. I feel this is the money maker. As long as, I mean, as long as we have the videos on the site, they'll see it. Yeah. So yeah, check out all of our stuff. Um, Go to Amazon.com, search Josh McCain in the books to find my books if you want to buy them. And also, I'm going to plug the other website I wrote right for, uh, goingfor2.com. It's a sports gambling website. I'm not a degenerate gambler. I just write a funny column why I hate for them. So go check that out. And we'll see you guys next week. Toodles. Later.